News Leader 9 on NBC 38. First at 4 continues. It's Monday, and thank you so much for staying with us into the second half hour of First at 4. I'm D. Armstrong. The death of Queen Elizabeth II has set into motion a period of mourning. It will culminate with a huge state funeral September the 19th, honoring her lifetime of devotion and service. Today, Scotland honoring her with a prayer service. Riley Carlson is in London with more. A service of prayer for Queen Elizabeth II was held at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh Monday. Her son, King Charles III, and the Queen Consort were in attendance along with other members of the royal family. I think that it's important that we honour her as, as is due to our Queen. Uh, I think it's important that we reflect her life uh, adequately. King Charles had a full schedule Monday starting at the Houses of Parliament. In his first address there as King, he vowed to continue the Queen's dedicated service to her people. He then flew to Scotland for a prayer service and a meeting with the Scottish Parliament. All along the way, he greeted members of the public who showed up to wish him well and offer condolences for the Queen. On Sunday, her coffin made its way from her beloved Balmoral estate where she died Thursday to the capital. An honor guard and military band led the procession. She's the only Queen I've ever known. I mean, I think she done really good for us. It's just probably something quite historic. Like, she's been through quite a lot with the country and then probably not going to see another queen again in our lifetime. In London, I'm Riley Carlson. According to the Washington Post, Britain's new king is not as well loved as his mother. The pollsters are saying that people don't strongly dislike him, but 57% said he would probably do a very good or maybe a fairly good job as king. President Biden in Boston today promoting a massive upgrade to that city's airport. The money's part of the president's controversial infrastructure spending package. Speaking at Logan International Airport, Mr. Biden hailed the $62 million investment, calling it historic. He said the project will add more gates and ticket counters to the airport, an e-terminal, and improve taxi times and traffic jams on runways and help to alleviate air pollution in nearby communities, as well as, he says, as congestion and flight delays. Folks, America invented modern aviation. But we've allowed our airports to lag behind our competitors. Today, today, not a single solitary American airport, not one, ranks in the top 25 in the world. The United States of America, not one airport, ranks in the top 25 in the world. What in the hell's the matter with us? It means commerce. It means income. It means security. And we don't even rank in the top 25, not one single airport. Now, Mr. Biden saying this will help U.S. airports that are lagging behind to catch up with their global competitors. He says the upgrade will help create 5,900 union jobs, too. A routine check of donated goods has unexpectedly turned up a couple of wartime letters in Kentucky. So an effort is underway to try to find any relatives of the servicemen who wrote that letter years ago, 80 years ago. John London reports. The words are from 80 years ago. Uh, I was very glad to receive your letter before I leave here. Not that I know where or when I'm going. Lost sentences that have surfaced fresh as part of America's story. You can imagine how anxious we all are, he writes, to know what's going to happen to us. Letters home from a war, one written at sea. You'll hear from me as soon as I am located someplace else, which I hope is soon. Yeah. Yours till I hit an ocean front, Bob. Oh. The other mailed four months earlier from the Naval Training Center at Great Lakes, Illinois. This distinctive box was among the donations at the Goodwill store in Bellevue over the Labor Day weekend. Inside were two letters addressed to Miss Elizabeth W. Smith at a P.O. box in Bristol, Pennsylvania, written by Navy Seaman Robert Ballantyne. Gunners made third class aboard the USS LST-385. Sue Burrison happened by as Michael Flannery was relating to us what he has found out so far. And the ship was part of D-Day. The folks at Goodwill Industries do not know how the letters to a suburb of Philly ended up in northern Kentucky, but they're trying to find out. 
And something like this, the family would want. You know, you'd want the grandson to be able to hold his grandfather's letter and read his words. Hope you'll excuse the delay in answering your letters. Glad to hear you had such a nice Christmas. I have a swell beard. You ought to see it. Till next time, love, R.A. Ballantyne. And oh yeah, Goodwill is looking for Ballantyne's next of kin to have those letters returned to them. Right now, let's take another look at the weather forecast. Elise? Hey Dee, we're still hot and muggy out there uh, for this evening here in the Valley 86 in the Fountain City and in Fort Benning. Feeling even warmer, like 92 down in Fort Benning. But where we're seeing some of that rain still hanging out, we've got the 70s down in the Eufaula area and up near Thomaston. Now, once that rain clears out and that front pushes all the way through, we'll see that drier air settle in behind it. But for now, again, we've got some showers here down to our south mostly. A couple of those are thunderstorms. We are seeing some lightning with those storms, but the dry air is on its way and it will be settling in here uh, overnight tonight. D. I'll let you know what our temperatures are going to be like coming up. Thanks so much, Elise. The Houston Texans using their season opener to honor the 21 victims of the Uvalde Elementary School shooting. The Texans hosting the Uvalde High School football team. They wore Uvalde strong decals on their helmets. The high school players had their travel paid for by the Texans, along with local grocery store chain HEB, and even got to watch the game from one of the suites. Uvalde senior linebacker said it was the first time most of his teammates had even attended an NFL game. Happy that I'm, get, I'm here with my brothers and that we're able to experience this all together. It means a lot to a lot of these guys, you know, just to get away from Uvalde in general and just to feel the joy of being here. And then like coach said, you know, a lot of these guys never got, uh, are, may never experience an NFL game like this. And since that tragic shooting, the Texans have donated $400,000 to the school's memorial fund and visited Uvalde earlier this month to surprise the high school team with some brand new uniforms. Jury selection beginning in Limes County, Alabama today for a 17 year old. He is charged with capital murder, accused of killing five of his family members. His name is Sisk. He was arrested in 2019 after officials say he shot and killed his father, his stepmother and their three children. He was only 14 at the time of the murders. He's now being tried as an adult at 17. In April of 2021, he pled not guilty. Let's check out the weather one more time. Elise, what's going on? As we head into the day tomorrow morning, we're going to have that drier and a little bit cooler air settling into the valley. We'll continue to see those effects throughout the rest of the week. I'll have some more details coming up. Y'all are watching News Leader 9 on NBC 38. First at 4 with D Armstrong. Stay tuned for the Kelly Clarkson Show at 5 4 Central right here on NBC 38.
The Mosquito Fire, the one just northeast of Sacramento, California, it has now charred over 41,000 acres. Cal Fire says it's 10% contained. Aaron Heft takes us to the front lines. The Mosquito Fire, burning since last Tuesday. Threatening thousands of homes, but no tally yet on how many are now gone. Damage assessments for the most part are delayed during wildfires because, well, most of the attention is actually going toward fighting the fire, but that causes a lot of tension for the people stuck behind evacuation lines, wondering if their homes are still standing. Driving down this hill, Michigan Bluff Road, it's parallel to Gorman Ranch Road, and it's very obvious that five separate properties did not make it through the Mosquito Fire. But if you can continue down this hill, we can find 15 homes untouched by fire. We're in the historic district of Michigan Bluff, and this is what it looks like as of Sunday morning. But mere feet behind some of these untouched properties, the ground completely scorched, just showing how hard this firefight has been. Fire crews are working deep in these valleys, the terrain with unmaintained roads and weather all playing their own role. Some areas looking like this, while others are completely unscathed. Down on Bath Road in Forest Hill, you can see retardant in the trees, these dozer lines cut in the night, and fire hose on this street lined with homes. Though the foothills are lined with private roads, homes tucked deep into these woods, and over this charred ground, there's still no telling what may lie at the end. Now from your Storm Team 9 Alert Center, WTBM meteorologist Elise Bushman. A bit of a cloudy scene down in Eufaula right now. We just saw some showers and storms pass through that area and we're still seeing a little bit of those showers and storms lingering down in our southern counties. And that's thanks to this front that's pushing through the area right now, sitting kind of on top of us here in the valley. And we'll continue to see showers and storms push up in front of that front, but behind it, nice dry air and clear skies. And that's what's in store for us for the rest of this week. But right now we'll take a little bit of a look at these storms here. We've got one popping up just over Lumpkin right now. These are moving eastward a little bit southward too. And some of these are creating lightning too. So some thunderstorms in the mix there and some heavy rainfall. But again, behind that, we're gonna see nice dry air and cooler temperatures for right now though still feeling muggy here in the valley and feeling like 90 in columbus 85 over in auburn but where we've seen that rain feeling like the 70s down in eufaula however once that front moves through and this air settles in this drier air is going to knock that gulf moisture out it's going to stay out for the rest of the week leaving us with really comfortable conditions especially in the early mornings when we'll really see those nice fall like temperatures popping up in the afternoon. Temperatures are going to be back in the mid to upper 80s. And we won't see that moisture build back into the valley here until about Friday as we head into the coming weekend. But still rain chances are going to stay low. Rain chances right around zero for the rest of this week after that dry air moves in. Mostly clear skies every single day. A lot of sunshine in store for us and temperatures again somewhat comfortable here in the mid to upper 80s for the rest of this week. But these morning temperatures are what the big story is feeling like 61 there Wednesday morning and 63 for tomorrow morning. So the low 60s, some people even in the 50s in our northern counties really getting to enjoy that false fall that we're going to see for this week. We do have 12 days until the actual start of fall here in uh, the country. So we do have a little bit of waiting to do before we can really say that it's fall and get those decorations out. But this week is going to make you want to do it with those nice clear skies and comfortable morning temperatures in the 60s D. So we can leave the rain gear put away. We're not even going <laughs> to see much of a chance for okay. rain over the weekend. We've got about a 10% chance, 10% coverage maybe Saturday, Sunday, uh, possibly Friday, once that moisture starts to build back up. But really, things are going to continue to stay dry even into next oh, week. Oh, shucks. I just bought some cute rain boots. Well, you can still wear them. I'll, I'll wait. Yeah, I'll hold them. <laughs> okay. We'll have any puddles to splash in. <laughs> Thanks so much, Elise. Coming up, why are more young people choosing to be morticians as their profession? And a deadly virus that attacks primarily three-year-olds 
doctors are telling parents what you need to be looking out for. The Centers for Disease Control is asking pediatricians to be on the lookout for a rare, but it is serious, respiratory infection that's happening in small children. It's not the flu, it's not COVID, it's called the enterovirus, D68, which can lead to a condition that will call par cause paralysis. Now the infection, which tends to emerge in late summer and early fall, can lead to acute flaccid myelitis, or AFM. AFM causes weakness in the arms and the legs and some cases can even lead to paralysis. The average age of children affected only three and kids with asthma may be at a higher risk. It's tricky to diagnose, they're saying, because its symptoms mirror those of the cold or you might think your child just has the flu. They'll have a runny nose, cough and fever. Parents are suggested to contact their child's doctor if they're having difficulty breathing or if their symptoms keep getting worse. There are more people going to mortuary schools. I'm dead serious. The American Board of Funeral Service Education says there was a 24% jump in enrollment from 2020 to 2021. This year enrollment could be even higher than 24%. This is promising for an industry facing a worker shortage. Right now, 90% of students in this field have a job after graduating. In 2021, the median salary for a funeral home manager, $74,000 and about $49,000 if you want to be a mortician. 
Patients are finding it hard to fill their Adderall prescriptions, and they're not the only ones. Pharmacies across the nation are reporting a shortage of Adderall. Although it's commonly used to treat people with ADD, experts believe the scarcity is due to abuse of the medication and a limit in place by the FDA. Now, the FDA is not currently sounding an alarm about the shortage, but it's still starting to scare some patients who feel they really need it, especially during back to school. One of Disney's favorite characters moves from cartoon to live action, but she's still under the sea. Disney fans are looking forward to heading under the sea next summer. The studio has released its first teaser clip from the upcoming Little Mermaid live action film. It shows Halle, ba Halle Bailey, she's portraying Ariel. You know, Ariel's the mermaid who gives up her voice to trade her fins into legs. The film's director says it was important to honor the original while also bringing some depth to the new film. It's going to feature four brand new songs as well as favorites like Part of Your World, The Little Mermaid is set to hit theaters May 26th. Remember Indiana Jones? It's back for its next adventure. The first teaser for the new untitled film so far was debuted at Disney's D23 Expo on Saturday. Also making a very emotional comeback is the famous archeologist himself. There he is, Harrison Ford. He's gonna take on the role of Dr. Jones again, 40 years after he first starred in 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's going to hit theaters June of next year. And the 74th Emmy Awards are here. Kenan Thompson, he's the man, is going to host the show live in Los Angeles tonight. The show will be honoring the best of primetime TV, all voted on by the Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences. There will be a full studio audience for the first time in about two years because of COVID. Now the Emmys will also be streaming on Peacock.
As always, I want to thank you so much for watching First at Four right here on WLTZ NBC 38. Stay tuned. The Kelly Clarkson Show is coming up next.